Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for your patience. My name is Pam Pearson. I'm the director of the International Cryosphere Climate Initiative, which coordinates this pavilion, uh, which is really focused on the importance of cryosphere regions, mountain regions, polar regions, permafrost, the Arctic and Southern Oceans, and their importance in the global climate system. It is our honor, uh, our great honor to host this cultural event uh, together with the Swiss government and the Swiss embassy. Uh, I would like to welcome the two members of parliament, uh, Madam Ambassador and honorable guests. Um, we really appreciate these kinds of events that try to bring together the science and the cultural and arts communities. And I think we're very much in for a treat this afternoon. So thank you for coming. And welcome to all of you watching online, either live or catched. It is my honor now to, uh, to introduce the Honorable Member of Parliament, Maya Rimikur, who will say a few words. Well, thank you, Director Pam Person, for this invitation. I'm very glad to be here with my colleagues from Switzerland. I'm here with my parliament member, Marco Romano, from the Canton Tessin, as well with um, people from the embassy and our ambassador. Well, we are pleased to join you today for this live performance of the show, Walking the Giants. Well, we know we do have very, very big problems, and 2022 was a disastrous year as well for our Swiss glaciers. This year only, in this summer, which was really hot, the people from Switzerland that are in, were in Switzerland, they knew it was hot. The glaciers lost at staturing 6% of their volume. That's an absolute record. And this is really going down, as we can see on the information we've just had. At this piece, our country is set to lose virtually all of the glaciers by the end of the century. For over a year now, which is now the reason why we are here, the Egyptian art Aya Tarek and our Swiss musician Simon Petermann collected data from the Atmospheric and Climate Science Institute at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich. And now by applying intelligence, they then turn the data into what we're gonna see quite afterwards. Sometimes the language of art speaks more directly to the human mind than raw data. We are proud that Walking the Giants is a purely Swiss-founded exhibition supported by the Swiss Arts Council Pro Helvetia, the Embassy of Switzerland, as well as other Swiss cultural institutions. We would like to warmly con congratulate the Swiss and Egyptian artists who work, we were about to discover now, Aya Tarek from Alexandria and Simon Petermann from Bern. Thank you very much for everything you did for us and you're gonna show us now. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, warm introduction. Um, I'm really happy to have the possibility to say hello to everyone here in um, at the COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt. We, what we're going to do today, we're going to give you a, a short introduction into um, the story of this piece. Then we have a data journalist here with us. She will um, then, so then we will perform. That's the second part. The third part will be some introduction into how in the, the process from data to art, what happens in between there. And then in the end, we're going to perform again. So the story of this piece goes, um, in 2021, I spent four weeks in Alexandria with Pro Helvetia. I did a pro uh, a research residency with Pro Helvetia in Alexandria. And there I meet Alexandrian uh, artist Eya Tarek at a place called Pisaria. That's a little art center in Alexandria. And then we started to have a dialogue about topics both of us are interested in. And one was the melting glaciers in, the, in Switzerland and the uh, rising sea level in Alexandria. And we thought this could be a topic for, for a collaboration. 
And then I returned to Switzerland and a few days after the COP was announced in Egypt. So we knew either we're going to take this opportunity to do something, to do this project, or we let it pass. And now we're doing it. And Aya, maybe you could tell your side of the story, but also what's happening right now in Cairo. Hello, everyone. I'm really glad to be here. We've been thinking about this moment for a year now. And we thought maybe it will happen and maybe not. Uh, so it's really, really precious to be here. Um, so I met Simon last year. I was preparing for my show in Cairo, for Cairo in Alexandria. And then he was doing this residency in Bessaria and he wanted to talk and we started talking and naturally we started talking about Alexandra's future, uh, how it's gonna suffer from the implications of the climate change. And we thought we should collaborate on an artwork together. And since I like jazz so much, I, I agreed and we started this project and we've been chatting for over a year on Zoom, but working as well, trying to find, we try to find good scientists, good personnel to work with on the show. And we managed to have a great team of producers, great team of designers and a great team of technicians to help us get this project running. And now we have a great show in Cairo, Waking the Giants. So what you see here is three big, L yeah, three big screens, and we have... What's the size? Five by four meters each? It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, something like that. And Simon was performing in the middle, and we have... Can we show some of the visuals? So, so yes. this was the opening with Ambassador Baumann. And this is the same we do here, but it was in Cairo. <laughs> and this is a an image of me performing for, for the opening act. So the visual consists of two parts. Uh, the screen in the middle has the data that we collected from the scientists uh, in Zurich. And Catherine uh, worked on it and turned it into visualizations. And I mixed it with some uh, visuals of the landscapes and the glaciers. And the uh, other part is the vortex of both the future and the, and the past, and it's happening all the, at the same time. And yeah, one is going inwards and go, one is going backwards. I cannot really like explain how it looks like. So if you have time to go to Cairo and check it out, that would be great. Still running till the 10th. Yes. Yes. Would you please explain uh, the process of creating the music, Simon? So I think I'm gonna play now, but before I just explain what the piece will be. So, so all in all, we have seven scenes. Today, we're gonna show you three scenes of these seven scenes. And the first thing I'm gonna play, or we're gonna play is the correlation between temperature and CO2. And um, we created a melody that is, so we got the data from the temperature data from the last 14 decades since 1880. There is data since 1880. And so we created for every month, we created an average temperature and we put um, a note to it. So the higher the note, the, the warmer the average temperature over this time span. So this gives a melody of 12 notes, of course, because of the 12 months. And I gonna, play this for every decade. So I'm gonna play this 14 times and at the beginning, nothing is happening. It stays the same and the same and the same. But then after like seven decades, um, there will be a delay or echo effect and it will start rising. So we mapped the, this is a bit technical, but the amount of the, the, amount of the delay effect is mapped to the temperature rise of that decade. And then in the end, it's like uh, it gives a feedback loop. And this is a reference to the feedback loops in climate change, what we now have. OK, let's start. Now we have the video start. Is it integrated? OK. Uh, 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 uh,
this was the first part of the show. So it's um, the CO2 and temperature co correlation. And um, so we, the, the process in this, can I, what happens when I go next? Okay. The process of such a, t uh, such, such a project is always very long. I said we have like one year. And um, as you can see, Aya Tarek and me, Simon Pittman, we are the artists, but behind there has been a long process and a lot of people have been involved. And uh, we had scientific consultants from the ETH Zurich. And this was uh, Rafael Portman, Mauro Hermann, Leonie Filiger, Lukas Ferreira, Correa, Mona Buchenberger and Armon Mosche. They were helping us. They were creating with us the seven different scenes. The scenes are um, CO2 and temperature co correlation. Then the next one is the cryosphere. That's what, what will be happening when I play next. Then the hydrosphere, heat and drought, effects on society. Um, what? Uh, yes, tipping points and irreversibility and the science itself. These are the seven scenes we have in the show. And um, what we then did is we collected data sets to, of all these seven chapters. And then we hired a team of data scientists and they translated them for us. So it was for the sonification, it was Miriam Quick and Duncan Geary who were working on them. And for the visualization, it was Catherine Peterman working on it. And she is now here with us and she will explain what exactly she was doing. So we get an idea what is actually data um, visualization and how can this be transformed into a piece of art. Thank you, Simon, for this introduction. Um, can you see me behind the screen like this? Good. So um, the data we started with in the beginning, it's a little bit of boring, right? I mean, this is what the graph looks like of the raw data but this is not what we want to show in an art show. And when I talk to scientists, um, I might some, say something like, this is a time series model of future ice volumes of European glaciers. And this is an intermediate emission scenario. And I would even give you the source where the data comes from. But talking to artists, it's completely different. And my job was to translate the raw data into visuals and also explaining what this means and where, where the data comes from and how these plots were made. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. Um, so maybe talking to non-scientists, I would say something like each line in this plot represents a glacier in the European Alps and then there are a total of almost 4,000 glaciers. So the one on the, the largest one here this is the Aletsch Glacier in the Bernese Alps. And Simon and Eya went there to do a photo shoot. And so Eya saw the first time snow in real. <laughs> and uh, you see how this, this volume of the glacier, it decreases over time. And this is future data, so it's projected. It's what is gonna happen in the future. And the horizontal axis is the time and the vertical axis is the ice volume of the glaciers. But you can also see here, there are many lines close to zero, so we don't really know what's happening there. And uh, I try to transform it in a way so we can see it better. So the first thing I did is I changed the vertical axis and I don't show the absolute volume, but I show the volume in percentage. And this is how it looks like when we show the almost 4,000 glaciers with the volume in percentage. And even here, there are many lines, so we can't really see what's going on. So I decided to mirror half of the data to the bottom of the plot. And now we can see that half of the data is above and half of the data is below the line in the middle. What I did next is I introduced some color. So the color means that close to 100% is blue and close to zero or zero is red and there is a color gradient going down. And then I remove all the labels. Sorry about that. And I put it on a back, black background so we can see more contrast. 
This was one of the visuals that you just saw in the presentation. We also have another one, and this data is all related to what you can see here. So I was very surprised when I came here and I actually saw the same um, publications that I worked with to create the visuals. That they are also presented here at this pavilion. So the next thing I'm going to show you is the Western Greenland ice sheet height change. And you can see that in the beginning it looks like a, a boring plot. And this uh, visual can actually also be seen back there. Then, um, again, what I would say uh, about the data is it is a reconstruction, so it's not measured data, but it's a mathematical reconstruction of the Greenland ice sheet. The horizontal axis is, again, time, and the vertical axis is the height change of the ice sheet. And you can also see the publication where the data comes from. Then what I did first is I introduced some colors. Uh, the colors are the sea level temperature. So the higher the color, the higher the change in ice sheet. And I introduced a line, which is a mathematical model to the data. And I didn't only do that once, but I did that 360 times. So 360 times with a little bit of noise. And what I did next is kind of the artistic interpretation of the data, meaning that I introduced one more dimension. And I took this 360 lines and spun them around once in a circle. And that's what we end up with. And unfortunately, I have to say that we are already there in the middle of the whole. So this is data from 2013. And then I removed the labels and I put it on a back, black background. And that's what, also what you could see before in the visualization. So um, next up will be again the artists. Um, Simon will play another part of the show. Thank you. Thank you very much, Catherine, for this introduction into the scientific part. So now we go back to the artistic part. And what you're now going to hear is a piece. Um, this is called like the dying of the glaciers. And I start with a huge chord of like 25 notes. And this represents like the flipped, um, the flipped data, like this um, fallen Eiffel Tower, how I call it. And um, so it starts with a huge chord. And then over time, more and more, um, as we lose glaciers, more and more uh, nodes will also die and you will hear some ice crackling sounds. And um, to this I will play, uh, I will play some short notes and these are like, this symbolizes the decrease of snow events in Switzerland. These are the two data sets we're now going to hear.
I think I can also talk from here. So the last one is about the hydrosphere. And what I what I gonna do is what I gonna do is um so for water and then over time there is um notes are appearing and it builds up a chord and Every time, so it's over like 200 bars, that was my measurement, um, 200 bars, and these 200 bars is, um, um, every time a note is added, this means the sea level has been rising four centimeters. And um, to this I play an improvisation that is just an improvisation. <laughs> and so I can tell you more details about improvisation, but let's um, have this for now. So this is going to be the final piece of this, um, of this presentation today. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. 